Hello, friends. Welcome to Chickenlandia and welcome to Bok Talk, your 100% friendly backyard chickens show. I am your host, the president of Chickenlandia. I'm a backyard chicken educator here in the Pacific Northwest. Today, we are going to talk. We- Let me do that again. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm going too fast here. Today, we are going to be talking about saving your chicken from heat stress. And I really don't know if there's anything that's just more scary than discovering that you have a chicken that is really not doing well because they've just gotten overwhelmed by the heat. And I know that when there are these heat waves, it's really it can really make us feel like just so out of control and powerless in, in these situations to help our chickens. And it, I, you know, for me, I feel like I have to watch them all day just to be sure that they're not getting like super stressed out from the heat. So first we're going to talk about what we can do to avoid problems when we have heat waves. And then I'm going to share an emergency plan that I put together. This is something for you to do if you find a chicken that is in distress because they've gotten overheated. So, you know, you can just take some notes or (laughs) make some mental notes or save this podcast so that you can return to it later if you really need to. Um, Today, I actually don't have a submitted listener question. I usually answer a question that's been submitted to my website I don't have that today because I just didn't have anything that fit today's show. And I thought that, w- that I thought it was really important to do this show right now. Um, but if you want to submit a question to Bok Talk and possibly become chicken famous because I answer your question on my podcast, then you can go to my website, welcome to chickenlandia.com. Go to the contact section and you'll see there's a little drop down menu and there's an option that says, ask a chicken question. So you can go in there and submit your question. Please understand that I cannot get to every question and I certainly don't get to them in a very timely manner. Like sometimes it takes me weeks to get back to you. Um, So if you have an emergency, it's best to like do some research or, you know, go to my website, see if I have any videos about it. Um, or consult with a licensed veterinarian because I just can't, first of all, I can't give you veterinary advice because I'm not a veterinarian, but I can't, I can't like respond to emergency questions. And I get a lot of those and they make me sad because then I'll get them later and I'm like, oh gosh. So anyway, I just wanted to put that disclaimer in there. Um, while you are in my website, poking around, looking at all the wonderful information that is there. Definitely, you will want to join Chickenlandia Nation. That is my mailing list. It is the coolest mailing list, chicken mailing list in the universe. And that has been proven by science. (laughs) Uh, Definitely join it. Uh, I, I will not spam you. I do not send out a whole bunch of emails. But you will get a discount for my course. It's an online course. It's called Chicken Landia's Backyard Chickens 101, a chicken course for everyone. It is for beginners and intermediate chicken keepers. It is super fun and it's interactive. And when you're in the course and you ask questions, me and my co-instructor, we actually get to those really quickly. So that's one way, like if you want to have quick access, that is one way to get it. Um, I wish I could just answer everybody's questions no matter what, but I have to, you know, that would be all I did if I answered everybody's questions all the time. Um, So I hope to see you there. I hope to see you in Chickenlandia Nation. So before we get into the nitty gritty, let me say hello to some of the people that are here in the chat. We've got uh, Georgia Kenley is here. Patty Morton, the Chickenlandia Presidential Advisor, is here. She's moderating today. Who's Your Pioneer is here. The Mrs. Marvel. What a great name. <laughs> Eddie Abernathy. Hello. Julie Pagano is here. Diana. Uh, I'm, I'm so going to mispronounce your name is here. It's Diane, actually. See, I even mispronounced your first name. Like, who can't who can't read Diane? 
Thank you guys so much for being here today. So just a couple of announcements before we totally get into it, uh, because you guys know I have to pay those chicken bills. My chickens are bougie. They are trying to spend all my money. <laughs> so I have to, I got to pay those chicken bills. Uh, as always, I want to let you guys know that this podcast was brought to you by my favorite chicken. My favorite chicken is my favorite online shop to get all my chicken stuff. I get my feed there, including scratch and, fi- scratch and pick feed, which is non-GMO, organic, or, you know, uh, responsible, all that good stuff. Um, I get my chicken supplies from there, um, all sorts of chicken fun stuff, like my chicken purse and my chicken apron. <laughs> I got it all. I got it all. Uh, <laughs> so yes, uh, myfavoritechicken.com. I will leave the link in the description and in the show notes. And this podcast is also brought to you by Small Pet Select. Small Pet Select is local to me, but they have an online shop that you can go to and have their stuff delivered right to your door. They have two products right now that I really love. Um, One is their organic pine shavings. Love those. And I love their pet greens, which is like a little pouch that you can grow sprouts in for your chickens. And it like keeps growing and it's super easy. So if you have like a small flock and you live in the city or the suburbs and your chickens have destroyed every bit of foliage that they can (laughs) reach, (laughs) Uh, you can use these pet greens to get some good green nutrition into your chicken. So, um, and I do have a new product right now. I, I don't know if it's on their website yet, but I'm trying out their oyster shell. So I'll let you guys know how that is too. Um, I will leave a link for small pet select in the description and in the show notes. So definitely check them out. Okay. I'm drinking my apple cider vinegar water today. Every day I become more and more like a chicken. (laughs) Okay. I am so glad that summer is here. I, I really miss, you know, I used to live in Texas and we would have these long summers. It was hot as Hades. <laughs> so hot. But we'd have these long summers and we would go swimming. We'd go to the lake. It was really like, it just changes the culture when you have more summertime in your life. And up here where I'm at, we don't have that much summer. So I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, Yesterday we went to the lake. We had a great time. But one of the scary things about when it gets hot up here is that, you know, uh, two days ago it was 60 degrees. And today it's in the 90s. So that is just like a huge swing. Now, I know that many of you are saying like, what are you talking about? The 90s is not that hot. (laughs) You know, where I'm at, it's 125. And I understand. Like I said, I used to live in Texas. I also used to live in Southern. I lived in Tucson, Arizona. Um, I lived like further south of Tucson, like in the desert. I lived there for a few months. Um, And it gets so hot. It is like, it's, oh gosh, it's like, I don't know. It's like being on, what's the planet that's like closer to the sun? (laughs) What is it? What's closer to the sun? Mercury. (laughs) I think, is it Mercury? It's closer to the sun. Oh gosh. I'm not an astronomer. (laughs) Uh, Anyway, it's hot, 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 hot in those places. Um, But, you know, and especially if you don't have heat hardy chickens, like if you're in those places, it can get really dangerous. But, you know, what is what is more the most dangerous for a chicken is when the temperature takes a big, you know, makes a big change. Either it takes a big dive and all of a sudden it's like really cold or it gets really hot. So because it was like in the 60s two days ago and the next day it was in the 90s, that is stressful on a chicken. Um, So... That is why I'm like, you know, even even where I live, even though it's pretty mild here, I have to keep an eye on things like that. And I have to take precautions because not all my not all my chickens are like particularly heat hardy. I don't have 
only Mediterranean breeds back there. I don't have only light breeds back there. Actually, I don't have a, I have one heavy breed back there, but she's pretty heat hardy. Um, so when I, and when I say back there, I mean in chicken land, in my chicken yard, You're like what behind you? No. Um, so, you know, I mean, that's, that's why I talk about, you know, that's why it's important to, to keep an eye on that. And, um, that's why I'm saying it's hot and it's dangerous because of that big swing up from the lower temperatures the other day. And of course, if you're like in a, in a hotter climate, and you don't have, especially heat hardy chickens, you know, the extended days of heat is definitely not a great thing. So let's talk about um, a few things that you can do to prevent unfortunate scenarios happening due to the heat in your chicken yard. Now, I talk a ton about ventilation. Um, I talk a lot about how it's so important in the winter because people are like, oh, I need to close everything up. No, it's very, very important in the winter. But it's also super important in the summer. And this is kind of a no-brainer, but I'm, I'm going to mention it. Um, you definitely want to make sure that you have enough ventilation, that you have airflow going through your coop. And you may also want to open windows and open doors as much as you can if possible, you can even leave windows and doors open at night. Now, this depends on if you can still keep your chickens safe from predators and you'll have to kind of weigh the risks. Like if it would be more dangerous for you to have the windows closed and obviously you need to open the windows um, and just take that risk. But, you know, you'll just have to like evaluate where you are, evaluate your level of predator proofing and decide what you need to do. Now, if you can... One thing that you can do is put hardware mesh over your windows and then you can open them. Like you can secure your windows with hardware mesh. Um, a regular screen is not going to cut it if if a predator has all night to try and get into your coop. They'll just rip through that. Um, you know, and if you can't afford hardware mesh, you know, sometimes you can find it used. So definitely look for it. But if you can't afford it, at least double up on chicken wire. Um, and of course, if you have a dog or some other type of animal out there that can help, then that, that would work too. Um, and leave the, if you, if you have a run, a predator proof run, then you can leave the door open too. If it gets really hot, you just want to make sure that there's lots of air flow through the coop. Um, obviously hydration is very important. <laughs> In fact, I probably should have said that first. <laughs> It's too super duper obvious, um, but it is definitely something you need to keep an extra eye on during these summer months. Um, make sure that your chickens always have clean, cool water. Uh, you don't want to have your watering station like in the sun. You don't want like the sun to be beating down on it because you, you know, the water will heat up and then they're drinking like hot tea <laughs> when they should be having something cold. So you don't, you don't want to leave it in the sun. Make sure it's in the shade. Um, it, you can add extra watering stations. Make sure all your chickens can have lots of access to water, including chickens that are low on the pecking order. Um, and instead, if you're doing apple cider vinegar, if there's a heat wave, don't do apple cider vinegar during a heat wave. Um, it, you know, there's issues with it kind of affecting them, affecting their calcium levels and stuff. So what you want to do instead is you could supplement some electrolytes, uh, vitamins and probiotics into their water. And mainly, mainly it's the electrolytes that you want during the heat wave. So I, you can stop and do that for a couple of weeks, but you don't want to constantly be giving them electrolytes. Like you don't want to do it for the whole summer because that can create an imbalance in their system. So um, two weeks would be good. Um, and if you if you know how to ferment their feed, and I do have a video, I'll put that in the show notes and in the description, but when you ferment feed, you add hydration to the feed. Obviously you're using water to ferment it. Um, and that is an excellent way in the summer to get extra hydration into them. So if you never ferment feed, you might want to consider it in the summer because it's just really, really good for them. So, uh, shade, 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 
super important. Very, very important. If you don't have a lot of shade, you need to create shade, okay? You can use tarps, you can use umbrellas or whatever you can find to create shade for your chickens. Um, and a good tip is to put some sand underneath the shady areas or you can put like a dust bath, you know, make a little dust bath container and put it in those shady areas and they'll dust bath, they'll dust bathe in the shady areas and that will also help to cool them off. Hold on. My neck. <laughs> um, and here's just some additional measures. Like if you're feeling like, okay, it's really hot and I need to take some additional measures, you know, beyond just the things that are common sense, like shade, ventilation, airflow, and giving them water, lots of water. <laughs> Um, if you want to take some extra measures, then here's a few ideas. Um, like I said before, offer some electrolytes, vitamins, and probiotics in their water during, during heat waves. You can add frozen berries or ice to their water. Um, you can, you know, do that throughout the day. They love that. Like I'll put like frozen blueberries in their water and they'll like peck at them and, and it helps to cool them off. Um, if you're not in like a super humid climate, you can spray down their run and that will help to cool it off. Or you can, um, use misters and you can either like set your, you know, a lot of hose, the hoses, they have like a mister setting. You can set it to mister and put that in a shady spot, or you can actually buy misters. Um, you know, it's a, this is another expense, so don't feel like you absolutely have to do it. But it is one thing that people do. I do have misters in my backyard. And I know that, like, I'm not in a super hot climate. But when it does get hot, it's really shocking to my chickens, like we talked about before. Um, so you can use that. If it's super duper humid where you are, sometimes the misters will get, it will make things worse. And it depends on where you have them, but sometimes it can make it even more hot. So just pay close attention to that. Um, you can offer them some shallow pools of water and chickens will go and stand in the water. They'll like cool off their feet. Like everybody likes to put their feet in the water. <laughs> They'll go and, and, and stand in the water to cool down. And then just offer like hydrating fruits and vegetables. That's like cucumbers, uh, watermelon, um, any kind of, really any kind of melon. Like I was giving mine, um, uh, honeydew melon. Like we, we eat the most of it and then we give them the, the skin that has a little bit of the melon still in it. Um, and uh, greens that have been in the fridge. So I will take like lettuce, you know, it's like a hydrating green that's been in the fridge and I'll give that to them. And that's good to just get that, get hydration in them and cool them off. Um, <laughs> It is normal, you know, when when it, when chickens get hot, they have little things that they do to let you know that they're getting hot. And, and some of that is normal, like they will pant or they will like flutter their uh, throat muscles. Um, they'll hold their wings out to the side. So they might have their mouth open and they're, they're holding their wings out to the side. And that's not necessarily a reason to panic. Um, because that's how they cool off. It's like us, like when we sweat a lot, we are cooling off. So I wouldn't necessarily get like super panicked if I saw them doing that. Um, if they're constantly displaying that behavior and certainly if they're like, you know, if you can tell that they're struggling, if they are, um, listless or if they look disoriented, like that's an emergency situation. And certainly if they fall down, that's a, that's a big emergency situation. Um, if you're just noticing that they're panting a lot and they seem to be just not handling the heat very well, then just bring them inside and get them hydrated. But if they are disoriented, if they're listless, if they are falling down, then you need to take action immediately because that chicken is very close to dying from, you know, overheating. So here is the heat stress action plan. Step one, you bring the chicken inside where it's cool. 
Step two is you will put your chicken on a cool, damp towel. You do not want to like, you know, put water all over the chicken or like, you know, cold water or dip them in cold water. You don't want to do that. That's like shocking to them. So just put them on a cool, damp towel. And if they're standing, just let them stand on the towel or lay them down on the towel. And then also get another um, cool towel or a paper towel and just pat down their comb and their waddles and their feet with that cool towel. Okay. And you're just, you're just cooling them off slowly and not in a way that's like super shocking to them. Um, offer them electrolyte water. If they're not, if they're not drinking, then you can take a needle of syringe and you need to be really careful doing this because it's very easy to aspirate a chicken. Okay. Um, but get a needle of syringe, put some electrolyte water in the needle of syringe, and then you just want to pull a few drops on the side of their beak so it goes in and they should then like that should stimulate their, um, drinking reflex. So they should drink it at that point. If it's just falling out of their mouth then you're probably in a really bad situation. Um, but don't give up yet. <laughs> Step five is optional, but I think it's very important. And, you know, I am somebody that leans very naturally. I have been doing uh, homeopathics for like 25 years. I have used homeopathics on myself. I've used them on my animals. I've used them on my family. Um, I've even given them to my friends. <laughs> uh, so, and our family has a licensed homeopath that we work with. So I will reach for homeopathy when, you know, when something's wrong. Uh, so what I would go for in this circumstance would be a remedy called aconite. Um, and you can find it at like your health food store or whatever. The most popular ones that you see everywhere are by a company called Boiron. That's B-O-I-R-O-N. And they're in like these little blue vials. Okay. So you want aconite in the 30 C potency. And you will dose them 10 minutes apart. So you give them one dose, like right when you bring them in, wait 10 minutes, give them another dose, wait another 10 minutes and give them another dose. Um, and you, I, I, I do have, it's, it's a tad complicated learning how to dose homeopathics. So I do have a blog post about it and I'm going to put that in the description and in the show notes so that you can read it and learn exactly how to dose your chickens. But basically what you would do, just this is just like a really short uh, explanation, is you would put, you know, you put the aconite into like a, a couple of the pellets into some water. You take the water into a needle, a syringe, and then just put like a a drop or two into their beak. And as long as it just like lands inside their beak, they may not even have that drinking reflex, but as long as it gets in their mouth, that is a dose. Okay. And you want to do that 10 minutes apart. And the reason I say aconite is because aconite is the remedy that is used for like a big shock or a big scare. Um, it's even like there's a saying like wh where there's fright aconite. That's what <laughs> homeopathics will say just to remember like if, and also it's great like if a, if an illness comes on super suddenly, like, like let's say your chicken is doing fine and then all of a sudden they're sick and you're like, what? Like that came out of nowhere. And then you give them aconite as the first remedy and then go on from there. But it is, it was definitely what I would reach for for something like heat stress, because it is, it's a very stressful, scary situation for both you and definitely for the chicken. So that's what I would go for. Um, you know, and then also, and I didn't actually didn't put this in the action plan, but if you use flower essences or, or otherwise known as flower remedies, um, rescue remedy would be a great one for this. And I would just, take a couple drops and rub it into the chicken's back to try and help also to calm them down that way. So, you know, I'm telling you this and I also think it's very important to understand that once a chicken 
is in this state, sometimes there's nothing you can do. You know, I had uh, my sister, who I call the Pippa of Chickenlandia. <laughs> she has chickens down in Texas. And one year, I mean, it was like, it was so hot. It was just brutal down there. And she lost a chicken. Um, the chicken just collapsed and she brought it inside and she did everything she could. She had it on a towel. You know, she's trying to, to cool it down. And, and unfortunately the chicken just passed away. So sometimes there's not much you can do, but chickens are resilient. It, I, and I have seen so many miracles happen. I have seen chickens where it was like, they basically rose from the dead. <laughs> it was like, whoa, like <laughs> this chicken really wants to keep pecking and scratching. So <laughs> you never know. And, you know, at least you'll know that you tried. And obviously if that chicken is living with you and you're l listening to this podcast, you're a very good chicken parent. So um, certainly don't blame yourself if that happens. It's just, it's nature. And sometimes it just happens. So I hope this helps. And also I want you guys to remember to hydrate. <laughs> hydrate and don't let yourself get sunburned. I saw so many college kids yesterday at the lake with sunburns like on their backs. And I was like, oh my gosh, I just wanted to like come up to them and like put aloe vera. <laughs> I was like, you're going to thank me for this later. So yeah, definitely you don't, you don't want that. Don't get a sunburn and uh, get yourself some good non-nano uh, sunscreen, non-chemical sunscreen, nothing that would be bad for you or the environment and get yourself a good hat. Hats are great. So I hope this helps and um, stay cool. Stay cool out there. All right. I am going to open up the chat for questions. If you have a question, please type it in all caps so that I can actually see it because <laughs> even with these glasses, which are like, oh gosh, so it's, it's backwards. I can't tell which way I'm going. Um, yeah, even, even with these glasses, like they're, these are progressive lenses and I still like, I still either have to take them off or go like this. <laughs> Okay, we have a question. Uh, uh, Benny Heim, I think is the name. Uh, what can I do to add more calcium for my older chickens laying soft eggs? I already have good layer feed and oyster shells and prebiotics in their food, but they are still laying soft or broken eggs. So um, it's possible that it's not a calcium deficiency that is causing this. And it's just that your chickens are of advanced age. And this is something that does happen once they get older. Um, one thing that you might consider, just keep an extra eye on them. Make sure that they don't have um, any kind of respiratory thing going on because sometimes um, a respiratory problem can lead can lead to like soft shell eggs or weak shelled eggs. Um, the other thing is the weather. If it's hot, then it's also not uncommon for them to be laying softer, you know, soft shell eggs or um, just weak shelled eggs. But it sounds like you're giving them, uh, you know, good nutrition. You're giving them layer feed. You're giving them oyster shell um, you might, you might consider if you're not already doing this, adding some fresh food into their diet, uh, giving them some nutritious, uh, kitchen scraps, like mostly vegetables, uh, mostly green vegetables, um, you know, low sugar fruits and some lean, healthy proteins for them. Um, and you could consider giving them something like, um, grubs, which has, and actually they have a lot of calcium in them, the, the grubs, um, that you can buy, um, or, you know, you can scramble up some eggs. That's always a good, <laughs> a good, uh, you know, if they lay one of those soft eggs, just scramble it up and give it back to them and get some good protein into them. But it, it sounds to me like your chickens are very well cared for and they're just getting older. Um, so you're probably doing everything that you can do uh, 
and it's this is, may just be part of their of their age. Um, Chickenlandia presidential advisor, if you have anything extra to offer, um, Benny, then please do. F uh. Uh, Edith Romo, 85, uh, first time broodies in this heat. They have water, but I don't think they're drinking. So they are drinking. They're just not drinking in front of you. So remember, you're the one that goes into the coop and takes the eggs and they know that. <laughs> so they are going to be really careful not to get off the nest when you are near. So, and a lot of people get worried. They're like, oh, my chicken's not eating or drinking, but they are, they are, they're just not doing it in front of you. They're being very stealth about it. Now, if you are concerned because it is a concern that it's so hot and they, she may not be getting the hydration that she needs. It might be a dangerous situation for her. Um, I would, you know, I would possibly bring a chicken inside and cool them down. You could put them, you could put them in a crate that really doesn't have a lot of bedding in it. Like, um, you know, I'll put them like in a dog crate with just a, um, a puppy pad on the bottom so it's not like they can you know just get all heated up on it and, and get super warm and if you have an area of your house that's a little bit cooler you can put them in that area and that can cool them off um if you want to break their broodiness then for me the easiest way and the funnest way <laughs> the most fun way is I will take my chickens on a car ride. So I'll take them on a pretty long car ride. And sometimes it takes more than one. Sometimes it'll take a couple of car rides. And that will usually, I'll put them in a crate with like a puppy pad and put them in the car. And obviously like if they're super stressed out about this, you don't want to do it. But, you know, my chickens, they'll handle it pretty well. Um, but that will knock them out of that broody cycle because they'll be like, okay, you know, there's this disruption in my life and it's not a good time to raise babies. And so they'll, they'll, you know, that, that hormone response will kind of shut down. So you could try that. Um, the other thing that people will do, and it, it probably won't work right now if it's really hot where you are, but they'll put them in like a rabbit hutch that has a wire bottom and, you know, leave the chicken in there, obviously, with food and water, uh, obviously safe from predators. And they'll leave them in there and that will cool off their bodies and kind of help with help kind of calm down that hormonal response. So that is one thing that people like to do. But it, pro it sounds like it's probably really hot where you are. So it might it might just not be cool enough to break her broodiness that way. But, it, you know, if all else fails, just bring her in. And even if she's still broody, like at least you'll know she's inside um, or bring her to a cooler area. You'll know that she'll be safe. Okay. Do Easter eggers lose color with chickens age, with the chicken's age? They do. Like they, I, in my experience, um, they do. So this is free me that's asking this question. Do Easter eggers lose color with age? Do their eggs lose color? I have found that they fade a little bit like with, when a chicken is getting much older that they're that the color of the eggs fades a little bit and I think that's relatively normal. Um Chickenlandia presidential advisor if you have anything to add to that please do. Uh, Industrial Crows asks, one of my hens has a chicken apron or a chicken saddle. Will this make her hotter? Um, yeah, possibly it will. Um, if it's super hot, I would take that off of her. And if you need to, if you, if there's a chicken or like a rooster that is, um, causing damage, like feather damage, then you may want to separate them for a little while if you if you need to, if you need to take the saddle off of her. Um, but it is possible that she could be getting hotter with that. Uh, Virginia, yeah, Virginia says freeze some water in a soda, bo soda bottle and then 
put that water in their in their water and it'll keep the water cool yeah I, i've totally um totally seen that and i uh i am gonna do a video about like an air conditioner like a <laughs> a very very cheap chicken air conditioner <laughs> and it's not it doesn't involve electricity or anything like that it's just like a cooler with ice in it um but i have a video coming out about that not this week but next week but like even just get like a jug and fill it with water like a um an old milk bottle and uh, an old milk gallon jug and fill that with water and then freeze it and if you put that in their coop or put that in their run or whatever, and if you have a few of them, that will help to cool them down. And they'll go stand next to it. like, And that's like super cheap. Yeah, Debbie says, I freeze gallon milk drugs that keep water cold for a long time. Yeah. And yes, wash it out really good. Okay, that might be the last question. If you have a question, put it in all caps, please. But that might, I don't know if we're going to get another question. I'll give you just a minute. Tell me where, if, uh, tell me where you're watching from. Who, who is, who is in a place right now where it's over a hundred degrees? <laughs> that is hot. That is so hot. I remember being in Texas and we would go, we would actually go to Oklahoma. We would go to, uh, cause I, I grew up in, uh, in the Dallas area. So it wasn't too far to go to Oklahoma. So we'd go up to Lake Texoma and you would jump in the lake and it would be like hot. It would be like jumping in my friends. <laughs> my friends, it's like, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what she said. It's gross. <laughs> Like you jump, it's like you're jumping into a toilet bowl. <laughs> That's so hot. Ooh, Minnesota. I've been to Minnesota and to Oregon and to Missouri and to Texas. And yes, it's very hot. Uh, Connecticut. Have I been to Connecticut? I think I have been to Connecticut. Nevada, I've been to Nevada. Alabama, I've been to Alabama. Oh, Tucson. Kentucky. Warden, Washington, Utah. Utah is my favorite state. I absolutely love Utah. Whidbey Island, North Carolina. Okay, guys, I am going to answer one more question because we did have one question. Um, Susan Harden asks, any problem using a fan in their coop? I'm in Ohio and it's been in the upper 90s. So... No, um, the only issue I have seen with fans is that, uh, you know, traditionally, uh, historically chicken coops have been very dusty. <laughs> they get very dusty. And so when you turn on the fan, it's just like, there's dust everywhere. Um, so you need to be careful about placement, like where you put it. Cause obviously you don't want just to be blowing dust all over the coop. Um, but if you can find a good placement and it, it improves the airflow, there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. And in fact, it could be great. You know, if you can, if you can swing it, I don't see why it would be a problem. And you could even put like, um, you know, a, a bottle of frozen water in front of the fan and then there you've got your air conditioner. <laughs> so there, there's that. And, um, yeah, I don't think there would be any problem putting a fan into your coop. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I want to thank my co-producer and my moderator for today, Kelsey Paulus, who's also known as the Chickenlandia Presidential Advisor. Thank you to Talking to Crows for editing this episode and to Double M Ranch for their wonderful podcast art. If you enjoyed this podcast, please, please remember to rate and review it. If you're listening to this on YouTube, you can just give me a thumbs up. If you are on your podcast app, especially um, Apple Podcasts, if you can give me a, a rate, if you can rate and review it, that really helps me. It really helps like the algorithm and it helps to get my, my content out there. So I really, really appreciate it. But the one thing that I want you to know more than anything else is that you are always welcome in Chickenlandia. Bye.
Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Stay cool.